Hello, hello everyone. How you doing? It's John Mark W. Hitting you with another biblical video again. It's been some time. I haven't posted in a while. Been so busy with other responsibilities, duties, and jobs, and you name it, this, that, and the other thing. But hey, we go, we back up in here. We're going to do it. If it's your first time listening to the channel, please like and subscribe. I share biblical truth on this channel. It's probably why you clicked on this video. It's titled whatever the chapter is that I'm reading from the Bible, and I also do musical covers of different kind of music from all kind of different places that I like, uh, whether it be video games, theme songs, uh, commercials, shows, uh, you name it, you name it, I'll do the musical cover on here, and I, you know, add my own little flair to it for fun, because hey, I just like good music, it's one of the things that I've liked ever since I was little, and um... Yeah, I just like it. So please like and subscribe if it touches your heart. If you like the way it sounds, comment, please. All that stuff is so much appreciated. Appreciate any support that I can give. If you'd like to donate, there'll be a link in the description with my PayPal. And you can donate any type of amount to that, whether it's one cent, one dollar, ten dollars, ten, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever it is. Appreciate you and that money will go to the funding and making sure I can continue to provide good content on this particular YouTube channel and uh, support me in getting better equipment and um, just support me in doing what I can do on this YouTube channel. And so I appreciate everybody who would do that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So our last video, um, or the last biblical video any, anyway, I know I uh, my last video on here was about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock and and uh, really, you got to get into the details of that. I may do another video on that later. I, I may not. But um, so many people have already covered that. You can easily go ahead and search for that if you want. I mean, if you guys want that, let me know. But uh, I'm probably not going <coughs> to touch into that anyway because that's celebrity stuff. And celebrity stuff is, is exactly what it is. It's, you know, we learn from other folks' mistakes. That's probably the only good thing about that. But you know but anyways so we last biblical video was leviticus 6 so now we're in leviticus 7 and so that's what we're going to be reading right now further instructions for the guilt offering let's get right into this all right verse 1 this is leviticus 7 i'm using the new living translation but you can have the king james a new king james whatever translation you have it's basically the same word it's just uh, worded a little differently but same stuff here god says his word shall not pass away even the word heaven and earth shall pass away his word shall not pass away so you don't got to worry about this thing being all jacked up or me twisting it changing it to to suit my own purposes or whatever like that i'm just a paper boy i say the word it's for you let's get on into it right now further instructions for the guilt offering verse one Okay. These are the instructions for the guilt offering. It is most holy. The animal sacrificed as a guilt offering must be slaughtered at the place where the burnt offerings are slaughtered and its blood must be splattered against all sides of the altar. The priest will then offer all its fat on the altar, including the fat of the broad tail, the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver. These are to be removed with the kidneys, and the priest will burn them on the altar as a special gift presented to the Lord. This is the guilt offering. Any male from a priest's family may eat the meal, uh, may eat the meat, excuse me. It must be eaten in the sacred place, for it is most holy. This is verse 7 we're on now. The same instructions apply to both the guilt offering and the sin offering. Both belong to the priest who uses them to purify someone, making that person right with the Lord. Verse 8. In the case of the burnt offering, the priest may keep the hide of the sacrificed animal. Any grain offering that has been baked in an oven, prepared in a pan, or cooked on a griddle belongs to the priest who um, presents it. All other grain offerings... Whether made by dry flour or flour moistened with olive oil are to be shared equally among all the priests, uh, the descendants of Aaron. Okay, further instructions for the peace offering. This is verse 11 now. 
These are the instructions regarding the different kinds of peace offerings that may be presented to the Lord. If you present your peace offering as an expression of thanksgiving, the usual animal sacrifice must be accompanied by various kinds of bread made without yeast, thin cakes mixed with olive oil, wafers spread with oil, the cakes made of choice flour mixed olive oil, the peace offerings of thanksgiving, must also be accompanied by the loaves of bread made with yeast. One of each kind of bread must be presented as a gift to the Lord. It will be, it will then belong to the priest who splatters the blood of the peace offering against the altar. The meat of the peace offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the same day it is offered. None of it may be saved for the next morning. And of course, this has to do for sanitary reasons and, you know, cleanliness reasons. Remember, this is way back when they didn't have refrigerators or freezers. You couldn't save nothing. There was no leftover. You couldn't, didn't have a microwave. You could heat it back up again. This stuff was made, and once it was made, it needed to be eaten uh, before it gets disgusting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. The world was younger back then, it was more vibrant, things were much more full of life too than they are today, so, you know, you never know what happens if you leave that stuff out there. The, you know, the tiny critters on there probably were a lot bigger, you know, especially there close to the African regions uh, in this particular time, you know, they're in the uh, desert around there. Uh, you know, on their way, you know, in the wilderness right now, they're, you know, in their tents. And so this is, you know, basically, you know, close to uh, northeastern Africa. Remember, they're leaving Egypt. So that's where they're at right now. And we know the things in Africa. I mean, hey, you go there in Africa, the ants over in Africa definitely ain't like the ants in the United States. OK, uh, <laughs> the little critters over there are like big critters, and especially during this time of the world. You know, it's it's post-flood already, but still, it's, you know, Africa's a, a, an entirely different place, my friends, brothers, sisters, those people listening. So let's continue on here. Verse 16, if you bring an offering to fulfill a vow or as a voluntary offering, the meat must be eaten on the same day that the sacrifice is offered, but whatever is left over may be eaten on the second day. Any meat left over until the third day must be completely burned up. Yeah, like I said, sanitary reasons, so they're letting you know the particulars here, so you know, they don't want nobody getting sick or anything like that. So, If any of the meat from the peace offering is eaten on the third day, the person who presented it will not be accepted by the Lord. You will receive no credit for the offering by it. By then, the meat will be contaminated. If you eat it, you will be punished for your sin. So that that was a bad thing to eat, uh, you know, old meat or meat that's been sitting out or eat, to eat old food. I mean, even nowadays, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's like if something is left out and you know it's been left out for a while and nobody's touched it or nobody wants to eat it, that's kind of a sign, you know, like throw that away, get rid of that. I mean, of course, we have refrigerators now, we have freezers now. So depending on how you store it, how you keep it, what it is, and then, you know, we have microwaves, we can heat stuff back up, but, you know, still... You know, that's why we have we have classes on this. Like there's, uh, you know, depending on what your job is, there's food service classes. You have to get a health certificate, right? Or you have to, uh, you know, you, you know, there's certain qualifications you need to do certain things at your job regarding food. So you know how, you know, what the temperature is, what's the danger zone, what's the good hot temperature, what's the good cool or cold temperature. And, you know, that's that temperature in the middle, right? That's the danger zone. That's where germs can live and thrive and get on the food and say oh i like this and then they start multiplying and then and, and, and before you know it all kind of other nasty things are going to end up being in the food because you know it's been sat in that danger zone for a very 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 long time that's why you know anyway they didn't have those wonderful advances that we have now today where we can store food and keep it freeze it or microwaves where we can heat it back up effortlessly and just pop it in and stuff like that so they had to be very careful about how they did it anyways don't want to get caught up in that let's get back to this we're in verse 19 meat that touches anything ceremony ceremonially unclean may not be eaten it must be completely burned up the rest of the meat may be eaten but only by people who are ceremonially clean if you are ceremonially unclean and you eat meat from a peace offering that was presented to the Lord, you will be cut off from the community. See that? That's crazy. You see that? 
the Lord was very, very, very clear. So he was making it very important, like, please don't eat the old stuff. It's not good for you, and it's just, it's just not right. You know, you're, you're going to get somebody else contaminated. You know what I mean? So that's probably why you had to get cut off at that point, because that's like, geez, why'd you do that? You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, it's very, very important. Now, I know later on, we're going to see in the future, in Jesus' time, when he steps out of eternity into time, he's born, born of a virgin, God sends him out as a baby, and he's a grown man. He runs into the Pharisees. The Pharisees, of those, uh, you know, they take those things to insane degrees to where, you know, they're trying to scold Jesus and his disciples for, you know, you know, not washing their hands before they eat or some junk like that. So they take these precepts and things that these priests are doing now and they take them to just an insane degree thinking that they're even, you know, more holier than anyone that ever came before them. And that's when the Pharisees, you know, self-righteous uh, type of guys and they, you know, that's when we start moving on to, to that type of stuff. And Jesus, you know, calls them hypocrites and brood of vipers just like y'all y'all need to quit with that that's not at all what god teaches you know what i mean they took it to an insane level and we'll see that later when that time comes but we're going to just get on back to this so we don't get sidetracked verse 21 if you touch anything that is unclean whether it is human defilement or an unclean animal or any unclean detestable thing so that's like crap dead animal you know, it already has little critters and maggots and stuff on it. I mean, why would you do that anyways? Like, you know, the only people that did stuff like that are people who were into detestable things like that. And that was usually in this time, and even still today, your witch doctors, uh, you know, some cultures you call it different things. Um, you know, whack-whack doctor, they call them. You know, they, you know, some of these people, they need parts to make these potions that they make and so they're gonna you know search dead things to find what they need to do and that's that so the lord calls that an unclean or detestable thing and then human defilement meaning you know you know feces fe fecal matter basically so god's saying like you know, don't touch that remember these people were slaves they're coming out of the land of egypt God is letting them know how to live because they don't really know anything besides what they learned in Egypt. God is letting them to be free people, right? So God is showing them how to be free, what to do, what not to do. I know people will look at these and say, why is God giving them all these rules? You got to understand this is why, okay? So God is letting them know how to live because they're slaves coming out of Egypt, they they want to be free people. They are going to be free people, but they're not totally free yet. I mean, with God, they can be free, but he's letting them know the steps they need to take in, in order. I mean, come on. We in the U.S. kind of know this stuff already. It's like common sense. But remember, these folks, years and years and years, slavery in Egypt. Okay, so they need to know this stuff. And they need to know why, and God is letting them know all the details. So that's why it's like this, okay? So yeah, any other detestable thing, and then eat meat from a peace offering presented to the Lord, you will be cut off from the community. Yeah, because the germs, it's, it's on you. You touched it, and now you're going to eat and touch meat? That's, that's why, you know, traditionally, what do we do before we eat? <laughs> we do wash our hands, we, we do get cleaned up. You know, because you're about to go ahead and enjoy food. You don't want, you know, you to have the stuff on you, microorganisms and stuff that's going to get you sick and then just go straight to eating. I mean, that don't make no sense, right? Even if you're going to go out to eat, even if you're going to eat out, what do you do before you eat out? You wash yourself, you get clean, then you go ahead and eat out. You know what I mean? You go ahead and uh, go inside the establishment and eat. Okay, so the forbidden blood and fat, all right? Verse 22, then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. You must never eat fat, whether from cattle, sheep, or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn to pieces by wild animals must never be eaten, though it may be used for any other purpose. Anyone who eats fat from an animal presented as a special gift to the Lord will be cut off from the community. So what does that mean? 
If it's a special gift from the Lord, that's not for normal people to just go there and start chowing that. That's for the Lord, okay? So, it's just, so be holy and set apart like the Lord is holy. That's what it means. Holy, set apart. So if you tithe, right, to your church for your faith, that tithe is, what is that? The first 10% of your income that is holy to be set aside to the Lord, okay? So that's what that is, all right? And that is for the Lord. It's not for you to go spending and, I don't know, getting clothes with or getting something with. That is set aside. It's usually the first 10%. And so back then, same rules apply, right? Okay, so anyone who eats fat from an animal presented as a special gift from the Lord will be cut off from the community. Okay, we read that already. Verse 26, no matter where you live, you must never consume the blood of any bird or animal Anyone who consumes blood will be cut off from the community. So, <laughs> yeah. That's why, you know, anyone who consumes, you know, he's, he literally said, if you consume the blood of an animal, all right, any animal, the blood of it, you, you want to drink the blood of it. That's just, that, why would you do that? Okay, like, that, no. That's, you're going to end up catching something because blood of different animals is different and it doesn't it's not compatible with human you know stuff only people who like to drink blood are those people who are into the witchcraft stuff sorcerers whack whack doctors witch doctors folks like that and so you know people who are into that they will drink it and they obviously don't care for the lord's teachings or his warnings about that so they're going to just keep drinking it and they're going to jack themselves up <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, but yeah, continuing on, a portion for the priests, all right? Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present a peace offering to the Lord, bring part of it as a gift to the Lord. Present it to the Lord with your own hands as a special gift to the Lord. Bring the fat of the animal together with the breast and lift up the breast as a special uh, offering to the Lord. Then the priest will burn the fat on the altar, but the but the breast will belong to Aaron and his descendants. Yeah, Aaron, because that's that's Moses' brother. If you don't know who Aaron is, that's Moses' brother. And his descendants are going to be the, basically the priests and stuff like that that carry out the stuff, right? So that's what that's who that is. If you didn't see I about that in my older videos, I already talk about that in my older videos just in case. I just wanted to mention that as a little footnote there. Verse 32. Give the right thigh of your peace offering to the priest as a gift. The right thigh must always be given to the priest who offers the blood and the fat uh, of the peace offering. For I have reserved the breast of the, of the special offering and the right thigh of the sacred offering for the priest. It is the permanent right of Aaron and his descendants to share in the peace offerings brought by the people of Israel. This is the rightful share. The special gifts presented to the Lord have been reserved for Aaron and his descendants from the time they were set apart to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded the Israelites to give these portions to the priests as a permanent share from generation to generation. These are the instructions of the burnt offering and the grain offering, the sin offering and the guilt offering, as well as the ord ordination offering and the peace offering. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses on Mount Sinai when he commanded the Israelites to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. All right, and that is the end. Good news about all that is they had to do that why did the children of Israel had to do that, listeners? Why? They had to do that because the perfect sacrifice didn't come down yet. The king, priest, and sacrifice all in one. There's no one else that can have that title. His name is Jesus Christ. He came down to die so that we wouldn't have to sacrifice animals and do all this stuff that they're talking about here right now. And oh my God, isn't that good to know that you can have your sins forgiven? Your life can totally be changed. You can be washed of all your unrighteousness that you've done morally in your life. Thanks to Jesus Christ. This is the only 
way you can do this. And I'm going to give this shout out right now to all my listeners, to those who want to get their heart right. Now is your chance. Bow your head and close your eyes in respect to Jesus Christ and everyone around you. Giving reverence to God. We're going to do this and we're going to do this right. You'll say, John Mark, I don't know much about what you're talking about. I don't know much about the history and the ordinances and things like that, the Jewish culture, of the Hebrews. But I do know there's something wrong with me. I've known it for a while, or maybe I've just realized it from listening to your video. I need help. I need the Lord to help me. I need to, be, I need to get my sins forgiven. I realize Jesus Christ is the only hope that I have to get that done, and I need help in that. And you would be right. Jesus Christ is the only person to die. I mean, vicariously take our sins, the whole world's sins upon himself. He was marred more than any other man. They ripped out his beard. He was suspended naked before the whole world. Yeah, I know, I know. The Catholics have the little, he's wearing the loincloth or something like that. And they got little jewelry where Jesus is being crucified and statues and stuff like that. That is nothing in comparison to what they really did to Jesus Christ on that day for us. So Jesus Christ has already paid for the sin and now he's saying, listen, I've already cashed the check. You just got to go ahead and go to the bank and get, get that thing for yourself. How do you do that right now? Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father. And you got to mean this from your heart now. Come on now. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your word today, and I'm asking that you come inside of my heart. Wash my sins away. Set me free. Oh, God, cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Take away all of my sin, and I'll follow you for the rest of my days. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. All of heaven rejoices when one person gives their heart to Jesus Christ. Know this. This is the very this is this is the main reason I do these videos, y'all, so you can get your heart right with Jesus Christ. You might forget who John Mark W is. You would have lost nothing. But to forget Jesus Christ, you would have lost everything. Get your heart right with Jesus. Now, backslider, it's your turn. If you guys need more time, pause the video. Backslider, it's your turn. Come on now. You were once serving God right, rightfully. Something happened along the way. Something happened along the way and you decided you ain't serving God no more. I don't know what happened. You know what happened. Whether it was somebody in the church, maybe it was something you did, somebody, somebody, something somebody else caused. Whatever the case is, you got to get that thing right. Get it right here, and then you're going to have to go back, and you might have to forgive some people. Hey, some people may even need to forgive you, you know, but whatever the case is, get that thing right. Continue to have a heart, right heart with God. You know what I mean? And, and God loves you. And the, the last thing you want to do is know that Jesus Christ is coming back again. You purposely not being ready because you out there being silly. You know the truth. And you willfully turn away and ignore it like it don't exist. That's, that's a terrible place to be. Because when Jesus, when things go down, you're going to wish you, <laughs> when the rapture happens and you get left behind, you're going to wish that didn't happen. Okay. All right. Pause the video if you need to do that. Christian, the Lord is dealing with you about something. You didn't backslide. You're not a sinner, but you're a Christian. And you know you got something weighing heavy on your heart or your mind. You're struggling, battling things. You need God to help you. This is your time. This is your time right now. All right. So now that everybody's prayed for, the, Christ, uh, the, the sinners are now Christians. The backsliders have come home, and the Christians have gotten whatever they need to get right, right. Now it is time to ask for what you need from God. Somebody's sick. Somebody needs healing. Maybe you're standing in for somebody else. They're far away from you. Whatever the case may be, get that thing right with God right now. Let's pray. You can pray in your native tongue, pray in English, pray in the heavenly language, whatever you want to do. Let's all pray together right now on this video under the sound of my voice. Let's do it to the Lord. He is 
present to heal and mighty to save. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you're going to do for these people. You hear their needs, each and every one of them. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are and for what you have done, for what you're going to do in the name of Jesus Christ by your precious blood. And it is done. Amen. We thank you so much, guys, for listening. If you made it all the way to this video, I really pray the Lord did something for you. Comment below if he did. Some of y'all may need to go to the doctor, run some tests, see if that cancer is gone, see if get some blood work done, see if your, your blood pressure went down, see if the diabetes is gone, whatever you need to do to, to see if the Lord really touched you. You know what I'm saying? Um, God, may God richly bless you and, and heaven smile upon you. Until the next video, I will see y'all all later. Stay safe, folks. Bye-bye.